the Zimmerman trial has really captivated this country, but it has also drawn a lot of attention to stand, the stand your ground law in Florida and the similar laws across the country. The attorney general has really stepped into this, saying at one point that he's suggesting that these laws contribute more to violence than they prevent it. Do you think these laws need to be reexamined? I don't know, I think it's always legitimate to raise questions, but my sense is in virtually every state, including Florida, the vast majority of people believe that you do have the right to stand your ground. You do have the right to protect yourself. And I think there's very little uh, evidence right now that the average citizen in any of those states is going to favor repealing those laws. I, I think people do not believe that was a primary factor. It was not raised in the trial. The prosecution did not raise it, uh, nor did the defense. Uh, the question there was a very different question. Uh, and I think that most people are not going to favor repealing the laws. And Stephanie, then why are we seeing sit-ins uh, outside the Florida governor's office? Well, I think people are very upset by it. Um, as you said, the, the nation has been captivated by this trial. <clears throat> you know, I think that there's empirical evidence of the states that have passed Stand Your Ground laws that actually violent crime went up, uh, murders went up. Um, and uh, the crime rate actually didn't go down for burglaries, burglaries and other uh, uh, crimes. So, you know, there's empirical evidence that these laws actually don't achieve the intended effect. Um, but, you know, to your original question, I think that uh, the American people want to have a national conversation about these stand your ground laws and about what happened in this case. Yep. And what happened between uh, Zimmer Zimmerman and, and Trayvon Martin that night and what you know, elements of uh, race and other things were involved. Well, you know, the, the fact is that the majority of Americans, in fact, believe the jury system works. Uh, the majority of Americans are inclined to give the benefit of doubt to the six women who served in that jury. Uh, <clears throat> there's a very intense uh, group of people who do feel, as Stephanie said, uh, that something has to be changed. They're sitting in. But I think when you go out and talk to average Floridians, or if you go, say, to Houston, Texas, and talk to people there, you know, it's very ironic. Houston has a concealed carry permit system. Mm -hmm. They have over 75 gun stores, over 1,200 places that sell guns, including Walmarts. Chicago has very, very strict rules. The murder rate in Chicago is twice as high as it is in Houston, about the, approximately the same size metropolitan areas. So I think you can get into empirical evidence on both sides of this debate. My prediction is virtually none of these laws will be repealed, and if anything, they may continue to spread across the country as other states look at it. All right, now I want to ask you both about an issue that I know you clearly stand on two very different sides on, the president's mm -hmm. health care law. Stephanie, the president is out touting the early successes that he says um, the health care law has brought to the country. <coughs> so I, I think this will be the question that Newt has for you. If there are so many successes, why does he have to keep talking about it? Well, I think that... <laughs> I hear you laughing. That was, un that was unfair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to answer it. Uh, he has to talk about it for, for several reasons. Number one, when the nation passes laws like this, which we are putting fundamental change into the marketplace, it takes time for the American people to come with it. We've seen that with every major law that's passed. Medicare Part D, the prescription drug benefit, just you know, less than a decade ago. Extremely unpopular until the, the law was fully implemented, and now it's one of the most popular uh, provisions of Medicare amongst senior citizens. So it's going to take time, and I think the president's always said that. The second reason is it's important for him to be out there talking is because we're about to enter into an important period, the enrollment period, mm -hmm. for people who are living without insurance. They're now going to have access uh, to insurance through these private sector health care exchanges in states where pre-existing conditions no longer discriminated against. Uh, well, they'll have access to affordable health care. For middle income and working class people, they'll have access to subsidies to help pay for it. It's important for people to know that these benefits are coming so that they can take advantage of it. Um, and I think that's what the president was doing yesterday.